Hello, welcome to Living Arts. I'm your host, Jackie Suarez. Thank you for tuning in. Tonight we're going to be speaking to Mara Mills, the Deputy Director of the Hudson Valley Contemporary Center, or Hudson Valley Center for Contemporary Art. Good. Mara, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. My little awkward intro there, right? <laughs> It's an, it's an awkward title. <laughs> no. A great museum, but an awkward title. That's why we've got to go with the HVCCA. Yeah. All right, yeah. so why don't we do this? Why don't we introduce our audience um, to you and just give us a little information about how you got started with the museum. Um, actually, I started with the museum. I had just closed a theater that I was artistic director of after 13 years, and I walked into the museum. And they had... Uh, it was Which uh, theater? Uh, Harper Mark Newman Theater. It was in Pleasantville. And we actually closed in the black, which is exciting. Nice. Uh, and I came in because I, I do a lot of original plays. So I came into HVCCA. They had these huge paintings. It was this exhibit called Extra, Extra Large. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh, gee, I could get playwrights to write plays. We could do it in front of this. I don't have to worry about tech. And I went to Olivia and Mark and said, how about this? And that was 11, 11 years ago. Wow. And we've been doing, it's called, at this point, it's called Writing the Walls. And mm -hmm. either we have playwrights or poets. This year it's poets. And their writing goes up next to the work for the time of the exhibit. And then we have a poet's walk. And, and this year it's February. So where we literally kind of do a curated walk, stop in front of the art, the poet reads at that point and we then go on to the next one so it's really exciting that must be really cool yeah it is really cool and it is an illustration actually about how much risk the museum will take and how much they will do to make uh, contemporary art accessible because mm -hmm. people come in they read the poems they look at the work they go I can have an opinion right so it's it's a really nice program yeah, no, I've definitely seen that when I've been there, you know, and I guess people might think if they don't know what the situation is that the person that did the painting also wrote whatever. Ah, okay, that's interesting. I'll have to make sure that we... <laughs> I, we well, just we, as you're going through it, it's like that they do both, but I think it's clearly marked that, you know, obviously someone else is writing it. Yeah. So you've been with the museum... For 11 years as, as for doing Writing the Walls, and then about a year and a half ago, um, Livia asked me to join the staff as deputy director and so I've been there about a year and a half on staff. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. You know, um, I guess one of the main things, because I recently was in the museum and I was um, seeing a uh, one woman play, I Belong, I'm Here. I, I'm Here, I Belong. Right. Right. With uh, Sol Miranda. Mm -hmm. And just a terrific performance. I know that you directed it that. It was a great performance. You know, yeah. really hoping that at some point in the future she goes ahead and she does that in a different location or continues tour. to do it. Yeah. Yeah, but I ha was just really excited by what I saw in the museum because I hadn't been there in a while. So there's so many different things we I'd like to talk to you about, but I guess if you want to start with one exhibit that we can kind of, you know, dive into, what would, the, what would that be? Well, actually, I, let's go back to the whole show, which is between I and Thou, mm -hmm. because I think that's really important about, in terms of the work that is there and also how we relate to the art. Okay. Um, between I and Thou is, has been informed by Martin Buber, who was a philosopher, Jewish philosopher, in fact, and he said that we have authentic relationships with everything. It not only with between people, but we can have it with nature. We can have it, and I think the we can talk about that with the pondic. You can have it with nature, you can have it with an animate objects or animate objects, take your pick. But that it is where there is respect and that the relationship has space between the two. So it's not merged and no one is in charge. And he said in between that, in between the, in an authentic relationship between the people is where God exists. But when he talks about art, he talks about that's where creativity exists, where art exists. So it's a way of looking at art in a different way, saying, okay, we're gonna have a dialogue, the painting and I, the statue and I. Where does that go? And the work that was chosen for this show really kind of, it's, there are international artists and national artists and local artists, regional artists, but they're all about somehow how culture has affected their art mm -hmm. and how we interact with each other's culture. So it's a very pertinent right now. It's about oneness, it's about coming together. So that's what I and thou is. Mm -hmm. um, 
So now there's a couple of names involved in that project that I'm actually familiar with, but okay. why don't we go ahead and go through them. I know sure. that you have, Susan O'Brant has her, um, it has some clothing there. Right. I'm not sure if that's a part of the exhibit, but it was close it to. It is. Okay. It's part of the exhibit, and I guess it's the, it, and if, and Orly Kogan's uh, pastries, <laughs> I, 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 embroidered, created pastries. Right, I really enjoyed that. You did? I'm it glad. Was, it was um, just so detailed to have a cupcake totally of fabric, or what would be the material in that it yarn? It was, it was yarn. all the yarn, fabric, okay. materials, ribbon. Um, Orly's grandmother did uh, samplers and her mother was a baker. So mm -hmm. you put those together and there you go. You get you have these kind of wonderful things. I thought it was incredibly creative. It was, and adults love it, mm -hmm. and kids run over to it and then they go, but they're not real. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting. So those kind of, um, are part of culturally, uh, Orly is Israeli, mm -hmm. and Susan is, of course, a Peekskill native. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have you have people there from all over. Those are the kind of those pieces, in a way, relate to how we how we see ourselves, how mm -hmm. we dress, the threads that connect us. Right. Um, and then other pieces. What other piece did you especially um, notice? I'm thinking, I want to say, was Joanne Brody a part of that? No, she was in the last show. But Joanne you know, works at the museum. You know, specifically between I and thou, though, who were the other artists in that? Um, the other artists, we have Isis Kinney, who's, done, who's doing Women Warriors. Mm -hmm. And that one is really interesting because it is uh, the well, uh, Arts Westchester was having Think Give Me the Vote. So they've got an exhibit going on down there, and they um, they asked us if we wanted to decorate a voting booth. So, as part of you, kind of like you know, the vote on the road. Mm -hmm. um, so Isis is a young female hip hop artist, and it's very unusual that mm -hmm. you have a visual hip hop female hip hop artist. They all seem to be men. She was actually a student of mine from Empire State College. So when you say hip-hop artist, um, is she doing the vocal part of that? She's no, rapping? No, it's visual. Okay, She's so it's visual, totally it's, visual. It's, right. So There's the, more performance artists who were women. Okay. But so the hip-hop is just denoting the culture. Right. Okay. And it's about, it is about it, cultural. So she was very excited to be asked to do it. And then instead of getting what we thought was a voting booth, you know, one of the ones with the curtain that you mm -hmm. go back and forth, we got a table with a plastic thing on it that said vote. <laughs> so we said, well, what do we do? And we decided we would make a whole installation out of her work. Wow, and just out of that, that small, uh, the small table. Yeah, so we took, the small table just sits there as part of it. And she did, as many hip hop artists do, she used the icons of comic strips and also contemporary women in part of it. The, those they were the superheroines right. who were in there. And homage to suffragettes, and it's a page from a comic book, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, and then taking that further, we said, okay, so when you go to vote, you walk into the voting room. There's flags, mm -hmm. and uh, Say Adams was up, and we asked him if we could borrow two of his flags, which they are very often American flags, but they are altered either with collage or colors so that you have something like an appropriated cultural mm -hmm. piece. Um, if you look at his pieces, there's a lot of African-American history in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I that I almost worked. thought when I saw it that it was a little tattered in some way. Yes, yes. Right, That's was I purpose. seeing that correctly? Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> yes, it's on purpose. Frayed on the edges. Um, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. a little kind of political statement there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he is, uh, say, is the great? They, I don't think he'd really appreciate my saying it, but the grandfather of hip hop, and mm -hmm. he started out spraying walls, and he ended up designing covers for Def Jam, mm -hmm. and he is actually going to have his own exhibit. He's going to be a solo artist in residence in um, coming in April with Pop Revolution. Oh, in April. In April. How so, interesting. Yeah, so he'll be here for three months, and he will be an artist in residence in the school as part of our education program. Which school is that? I believe he's going to Summit. Okay. Um, Where is that? It's Summit Academy. Okay, so is this a charter? And forgive no, me for saying so, No, it's not a charter. It's part of the, sh it's a wonderful school. It's part of the Peekskill School System. It and is, it's okay. it's for kids who um, just 
the way the public schools work just don't work for them. So it's, it's separate and uh, it's a way for them to get the education they need and want. And so people that are kind of leaning towards more an art, in a more artistic career or they're dis, um, or developmentally ex disabled or they're, in or some ex way? They're experiential learners. They can't sit still. Okay. Um, it, so special ed The public ed kids. school doesn't end. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, even it's not really special ed. It really is, you know, I have a son who can't sit still in a classroom and I ended up paying a lot of money for private school, mm -hmm. which they were all very odd schools and he enjoyed it. Summit is public and it's part of the Peekskill School System. Which, yeah, that's awesome. And it is awesome that they have a school where kids who cannot be in the public school can be there. So we send, actually our education department, we have residencies in every school in Peekskill. That we is send awesome. Artists in. Yeah. It's, it's so now when you have someone from another country that comes here and they're your artist in residence, it's like what, because I know um, there's something, I interviewed someone once from I guess uh, Samuel Copeland I think it's over in Cortland. It was a long time ago, so okay. I'm sorry All I can't right. remember it. Right. But basically, there's a house there, and they allow who's ever coming to do the residency to stay in the house. Mm -hmm. um, so what what are you guys offering when you have a residency? When we have an artist in residence, they first of all they have three months to work on new work. Mm -hmm. They get a solo show, and in exchange, we either ask them to go into the schools to teach, or have the the students come to us. Or, like you said, if they happen to be international, uh, we will often team them with a teaching artist who knows their, who is in the same field. Okay. Um, so you don't has nothing to do with their living arrangements. Well, actually, they are, they get to stay somewhere. I had the the last one of the last stars we had, Jin Su Han. Um, was living in my house for three <laughs> months, for two months. It was a pleasure. So, it was really good, delightful. He's a wonderful artist, and um, he worked with uh, students actually from Manitou School, which is a private school. Mm -hmm. um, so, our we, the exhibit and our residencies are very closely aligned to each other. Sure, you have various things that you're doing in the community that they can help you out with, and then of course what they're working on at the museum, museum, which is their solo show. Yeah, and the solo shows in uh, Between I and Thou happen in the pods. Woman Warriors is mm -hmm. a solo show. Um, I would like to talk a little bit more about that, you yeah, know, and sure. I just want to, I know that it was the 100th anniversary of, I guess, um, Getting the right to vote for getting, women. Women getting the yeah. right to vote. Yeah. So now, who, whose concept was that? Well, the concept started with, like I said, Arts Westchester was going to have this exhibit, and um, we all wanted to celebrate so it. So then you got the voting booth. So we got the voting booth. Okay. And then we put in the installation. But it was, it's a really important concept that not only that are we celebrating the women's right to vote for after a, a hundred years of voting. Can you believe that? It hasn't right. been that long. It hasn't been that long. And we still haven't broken that glass ceiling economically. Exactly. And, or even in rights. And, you know, as if you look at the politics of uh, women in in office, mm -hmm. all of these things, we still have a long way to go. And that was one of the things that ISIS wanted to make clear that it's, we have the vote. I mean, that's the last line in the thing. We have the vote, now what? Now. Right, the other things that come along with it and having, you know, the equal pay for sure, you know, the right not to be harassed for right. sure. Right, definitely. Um, you know, I guess um, when I was thinking about this this whole idea of having various people in history become these like this Marvel Comics, you know, character, yeah. you know, and I thought that was just such a great idea. Yeah, and I what I really like about it is there's both um, Shirley Chisholm, who was you know the first woman to actually run for president, mm -hmm. um, and Hillary Clinton in this you know next to each other I as women warriors. Mm -hmm. uh, so. So when, when ISIS looked at it, she made sure that she didn't focus on one ethnicity or one um, racial trait. She brought in all it women. It had some because people it's from all history of us. as well, you know, yeah. Sojourner Truth, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we need to get together. And I think that's sure. what she's saying in, the, in Women Warriors. We all need to be Women Warriors. Right, and what would happen if we used, if that voting block was actually, you know, we could actually make a difference if we, oh boy, if we were to we. come together. Yeah. And it's a shame we haven't done that. Um, it is. And I think it's interesting because in the, the arts really can 
have a effect politically where more many many people have come in to see women warriors and they you know especially the younger ones and they're like into the whole hip hop thing of it and then it's like you mean it's only been a hundred years and you get to do some kind of feminist education while you're at it right it's a teaching moment yeah it's definitely yeah. a teaching moment so now there was um, I guess looking into Miss Kinney's career and things that she's been doing why don't you tell our audience just a little bit about that as well um, Isis and the hip hop into the holidays because um, she's doing that and as well. And hip hop into the holidays. Well, hip hop in the holidays is interesting because it's um, Mount Kisco Studio Dance Studio, uh, the Peekskill. What are they called? The Devils and the Halos, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is a great. Is that note. from the high school? That's from the high school, mm -hmm. and it's an after school program in uh, that's connected to Master School, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the Steffi Nossum Dance Company that I guess everybody has heard of in yes, Westchester. Of it's very old. Uh, and a young woman who at 14 puts together her own choreography and uh, poetry. And she wrote a piece called Responsibility. So it's f that's four different groups that are coming in to kind of dance mm -hmm. in the space. In the space of women warriors. In the warriors. space of women mm -hmm. warriors. Um, take the statues out mm -hmm. and uh, they will celebrate. Mm -hmm. So it's a celebration of both hip hop and I think most of them are, I think actually I haven't seen any of the boys so it may be all women. It may be all women? It may be all women warriors out there hip hopping. <laughs> so okay, so what date is that? It's December 10th and it's three to six. Three to six, awesome. Yeah. And you also have a couple of other things. I wanna make sure that, I, that we have enough time to go over them so our audience can know all the wonderful things happening at the museum. Um, we have uh, in that one enclave where you had Soul's performance mm -hmm. um, is the illumination uh, of sacred forms. Yes, the sanctuary. Peter Bynum installed that, and it's a beautiful installation. Those are layered paintings on glass, and so consequently you get this kind of wonderful illusion of space. It's called the Sanctuary and the Illumination of, for, of Sacred Forms because it, the forms are all almost DNA or natural. Um, we had some kids in, and they're looking at it, and they're going, they look like orange slices. You know those veins and orange slices? So those kind of forms that we see all the time that connect us. And that is part of Peter's image. Peter um, himself was part of CISPIS back in the 80s and 90s, which was the, the, for um, El Salvador, during the El Salvadorian Revolution, mm -hmm. Civil War. Uh, but very much worked with immigrants and refugees. So he calls out the sanctuary and he, in honor of that, and to remind us that we need to give sanctuary, that we are all one. So again, the I and thou he brought right. into that. Um, he built that space so that we could have performance in there. That's awesome. And it was, it, it worked. Is, it worked beautifully. It, it's gorgeous. It's just the right size. Yep. It it's really just the is. right we size. We can get about 50 people in. They're comfortably, <laughs> without a little uh, lubricant. Yeah. Um, now, there's something in the museum that I've always wanted to ask a question about, the laundrette. Ah, yes. Okay? And I find that to just be a fascinating space in the museum. Um, do you see that changing at all? It's interesting. That's a permanent exhibit. I can't tell you that if somewhere down the line it may not be a permanent exhibit, but it's a permanent exhibit. It's by Thomas Hirshhorn, and it's the Rhodesian Genocide. Mm -hmm. um, and in between, pretty graphic visions sure, sure. of, you know, literally defacing and heads being chopped off. There is the mundane. There is the washing of hands or the flushing of a toilet. Mm -hmm. Things that... So this is for us, you know, just a little background for our audience. This is a room that looks like a laundry room. Yep, looks and, like a laundromat. And um, washers and dryers, so to speak. But inside they have a TV, TVs. a monitor, a monitor with these tapes in a loop. Right that are playing throughout, and it has um, some pretty dated um, photos and or, uh, magazines and things N like that right. on the wall, you know, but it's, it's, it can be very striking, a little disturbing. It's very disturbing. We actually keep eight-year-olds eight, eight and down out of there. Mm -hmm. um, it, we very, that has been used to teach social justice mm -hmm. 
And it's the because of the Rhodesia was not the only place to have this the genocide, Rwanda. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a good way to be able to turn around and say, and then the disappeared in Argentina, and the, you know, and you can really begin to look at how Chile. when we get mm -hmm. very involved in our normal <laughs> lives, we can forget all that. Right, and there right. it is, right in front of us, in a very mundane place—a laundromat where you wash your clothes. Um, those dated things are all relate to. No, of course. I mean, they're not dated yeah. because you know they're dated that somebody it, forgot right. to change them. Yeah. But you know, from the from exhibit itself. And so. also, there's books on the shelves, and those sh those books are the books he read to. Um, their philosophy books, their sociology books that he read when he was making that exhibit. So wow. it's his influences. So that's definitely a must see when you come to the, to the yes. museum. You can't, you, know, you can't help but see it. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you about, you have a couple of things coming up. Um, well, actually, uh, we'll talk about, we'll go ahead and talk about the stroller and the baby wearing mm -hmm. tour. Well, that started with, we, in, in collaboration with the, um, what is it called? The Presbyterian? What is Peekskill Hospital called now? The <laughs> the Hudson Valley Hospital. Hudson Valley Hospital. But you know what? I have, right. I have news for you. It's actually yeah. not called that anymore. It's called the New York Presbyterian. Um, New York Presbyterian. Presbyterian. Yeah. Right. right. Um, they have a marvelous, really marvelous maternity unit uh, with some wonderful people in it. And we got together with them to do part of the global latch on. Mm -hmm. So 40 women came in. We have an exhibit at the museum of a woman hand expressing milk from her breasts. I've seen that. Right. So that's the, that we, we call it the gateway art mm -hmm. <coughs> to breastfeeding. Right. And uh, so because of that, we did the latch on there. Mm -hmm. And sh actually, the artist came in and talked to the women about it, and talked about breastfeeding and how it was became the inspiration for this work and the painting next to it. Absolutely fabulous. I yeah. love the whole thing. Yeah. So um, once that happened, we started thinking, well, how do we get the children in. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sarah Connors, our um, museum manager, her son is all of a year and a month uh, and is our mascot. <laughs> he, I, <laughs> Took I, this I, on as her. He's coming to work with her, I guess. Uh, uh, he did for the first, well, from, for about three months. <laughs> he joined us in, he, until he started, you know, really moving. Then he had to go someplace else. <laughs> um, but he does come in and he looks at the art and he points and it's about talking to kids. It's both your, your basic literacy and also visual literacy. So mm -hmm. there, we had a, uh, two kids in the other day, one who was 18 months, and we made sure that we went to things that were at his level so he could, and he was in his stroller. Uh, so he was pointing at color and he was pointing at movement in the Bynum room and we let in Peter's room in the sanctuary, we let him walk around and he was going up to work and looking and staring and what we're doing was like, show me, show me what you're seeing, let's look mm -hmm. at it. Um, very serious child, lovely child. And the other child was, I think, about eight months. Wow, even that early. That early because the talking to them and the showing them the work, mm -hmm. they look and they see and they start babbling and it's really very, it's, it's fascinating. Well, how nice to, you know, expose that to, you know, expose them to that at such an early age, you know? They do it early and they, they're kind of yours forever. Give me a child till they're five. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have, um, of course, with the holidays coming up, we have um, what we call Cyber Monday and then Black Friday in the yes. museum. What are we doing at the museum for that? Black Friday, we're open day after Thanksgiving, and uh, you can you get. What did Sarah tell me you get twenty five percent off membership? Mm -hmm. And our memberships are very good prices, and they take you the basic membership you get to get into five, six other museums. In which others? Oh. Wrong question. <laughs> Wrong question. I can do. I, I can do some of them. Okay. Wave Hill in the Bronx. Okay. The Aldridge in Ridgefield. Bruce Museum in Connecticut. Um, Connecticut. Uh, the Hudson River Museum. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm missing somebody who's going to be very upset with me. I'd love to say Katona, but I don't you know, think so. Right? I, it is Katona. Thank is you. It? Oh, Great. okay. The Katona Museum and. You, we have a reciprocal arrangement, so you get a music Anybody membership coming with us, mm -hmm. and you can go in there. So um, that gives you entrance into any exhibit, any opening, any right. anything, right? Yeah, free of charge, um, and it gets 
from to us and those other museums. If you get a patron membership, which is hundred dollars, it's part of NARMA, which is the National North American Museum Alliance, and that one, you can go all over the country. And, and you can go into any show museum your, with that. Show your HBCCA membership card, and you get in. Wow, that's a awesome value. It is a great value. That's and an awesome 25 value. percent off is so incredible. So even here in the city, if you were go to go down into the MAD or any museum in the city, basically. You can go to uh, the Frick Collection, the Rubens. There's a lot of them you can go to. Unfortunately, not MoMA or the Met. Oh, okay. But the Met, you can still give a quarter and get in. That's a little well-kept secret. Yes. <laughs> 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 well kept secret. So now I know in moving forward in January and February you've got a couple things coming up. You have a Leslie Polino. Leslie, oh, it's that's going to be a wonderful show. Leslie Polino uses is a fabric artist. She uses all reconstituted fabric. She gets it from all over. Um, it's a wonderful way to recycle, and she builds these wonderful whimsical sculptures out of them. And um, she's also going to be going into the school working with, I believe it's the middle schoolers, mm -hmm. to do an outdoor sculpture. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So with, with these fabrics? With, the, with fabric and plastic. She does it with anything that's recyclable. Nothing, mm -hmm. she does not use anything new. Um, and she builds frames for it. And the creatures, and some of it is wearable, so you can actually kind Very of nice. walk around in it. So it, yeah. Uh, and she will be where Isis is now. Okay, and so that's, that's what we call a pod. Mm -hmm. um, and then after she comes in, um, Say Adams is going to have the Pop Revolution okay. show in there. And, and that's in April, but in February you've got Pros oh, of Pi? February we have, um, February, we actually Leslie will be in there in February from January to March. And then in March we actually upstairs are having four young video artists who are going to be showing their work. So, that's awesome, that's yeah. awesome. You know what, we've go, you know, we've run out of time, unfortunately. I, there were so many other things I wanted to ask you, but go ahead and tell people where they can get information about the museum. Okay, um, the museum, www.hvcca.org is the website to tell you about the museum itself and about what's coming up, what's mm -hmm. there now, the history of the museum, the mission statement, all of those wonderful things that we didn't very, get to. Very informative, yes. wonderful website. Yep. Go and you know they'll need your home number and your cell phone. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> to do that, it's, uh, we're at 1701 Main Street in Peekskill. Been there 15 years, and uh, it's been a great ride. Well, I want to thank you for coming. I've had a great time talking thank to you. you. I really love the museum. I encourage everyone to go there. More power to women. Check out Women Warriors. And to the Living Arts audience, I just want to thank you for tuning in. Um, check out our YouTube channel. Go ahead to uh, go look at the Facebook and see anything that's going to be coming up and check out old videos as well. Thank you, and we will see you again soon. Peace. <laughs>